The chess world has always been full of drama and scandals, but now, on day one of the FIDE World Blitz Championships, which are taking place in uh, the city of Samarkand in Uzbekistan, something very unusual happened. Now, I'm going to tell you exactly all the ins and outs and I'm asking your opinion on this matter because it will have a big impact also on the future of our game. So let me tell you exactly the story. So the tournament is divided in two days. In total, 21 Blitz games are played divided between these two days. But on day one, they play 11 games. After 10 rounds, Jan Epomnishi and Daniel Dubov they both had eight points, together, by the way, with Magnus Carlsen and Nihal Sarin from India. So four leaders, but the two Russian players are playing against each other in the last round of the day. And obviously they were very tired. It was a long day, a lot of blitz games, even one other game. Uh, another round had been um, taken a lot of time because there was another appeal. But OK, that's not important for now. These two players, Daniel Dubov with the white pieces and Jan Pomishi, they are playing against each other. But look what happened in this game. Dubov played here the move knight f3, black goes knight f6, and this is all very normal. But the next move played by Dubov is very strange. He played here for the second time with the same piece in the opening. He places the knight in the center, which is a bad move. But instead of just attacking that knight by placing the pawn in the center with a move like e5, Napo does exactly the same. He played the move knight d5 as well, and now Look what happened in the following moves. Knight b3, knight b6. They are just copying the moves. Knight c3, knight c6, knight e4, knight e5. And you see the knights are just dancing on the board like a very nice um, piece of, uh, of art. But these all these moves, they are suboptimal. They are not good at all. Knight g4, knight f3. And in fact, the knights are going back to their initial square. In fact, the knights are reversed. So the knight from uh, b1 ends up on g1 and vice versa. Knight c5, knight c4, knight a4, knight a5. And after having completed this sequence of moves, the players agree to a draw. You could think this is a nice way, a funny way to end your uh, first day. Both players are happy with a draw, but now the big thing happened as the arbiter interfered here and he stated that according to the the FIDE handbook according to um, I think it's article number 12 the players shall not take any action to bring the game into disrepute well that's something which definitely happened in this game because the players they didn't play a serious game you can get a game where uh, with correct play the game quickly ends in a draw but this is just a fun way of doing that. They don't take it very seriously. And um, by the way, what I think is also uh, quite remarkable is that the players before the game sitting at the board, they were just talking to each other, they're making fun. And according to video footage, they were even uh, discussing how to create this specific uh, way to, uh, to make a draw. So I think according to correct uh, translation, uh, I hope I'm not misquoted, but uh, it was said that the knight can go via g5 back to its uh, its home, its base. So that's uh, that's a clear indication that they prearranged this draw. Now prearranged draws happen um, on a lot of uh, occasions. Uh, for instance, you do have uh, many uh, many openings uh, where it happens, but I will talk about it more very soon. The interesting part is that the arbiter interfered. Let me complete that story. And the arbiter said, okay, you are violating the uh, rules. I'm not gonna give you a draw, but both players get just a zero. So the game ends in zero, zero. That's something which almost never happened before, I think. Uh, maybe uh, in, a, in a friendly tournament somewhere where players misbehave, but um, in a FIDE World Championship, I don't recall this has ever happened before. Let me know if you know any other examples of uh, of that but okay the players not happy with the decision they appealed but the appeal had just been reacted so the result stays and the second day of the tournament the players have to continue with a loss so that's quite remarkable and it will have a big impact on the standings because now Magnus is just leading by half a point finishing the, the first day. And, well, that can be a crucial half a point, especially if you still have to play against uh, Magnus Carlsen and many other top players. So now, why is this so important? Because, well, there are other ways of finishing the, the game 
into uh, into a draw. Let's say you have e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, knight f6, Berlin defense, very popular opening, and with correct play, it's really difficult to crack this uh, line. It's just impossible. Now, after castling kingside, knight takes e4, we have various ways of, of playing, but the moves played in this particular sequence, they are considered to be um, correct. No mistakes made by any of these players and um, after uh, this move the queens are standing in front of each other and well the best moves here are just to go back and forth with the, the queen to give a check to block the check and so on so hundreds maybe thousands of games have ended in a draw like that even uh, if the games were uh, just pre-arranged between the two uh, players so that's a very important point like you should play uh, like correct moves uh, not bring the game into disrepute but also, uh, the question is how to fight against uh, prearranged draws. I think that is the most, imp most the hardest part of this uh, uh, of this uh, story. And I'm curious to to see if the FIDE, the World Chess Federation, is going to take any actions against it. Especially, there are so many other ways of uh, making a, a draw um, by a pre a pre arrangement, and we all know. The famous uh, bone cloud game between Magnus Carlsen and Hikaru Nakamura, which happened during pandemic in an online game. Um, after the moves e4, e5, Magnus played the move king e2. Now in a normal game, there is no serious player who's going to play this move. You're not going to bring your king into the game. This is just a funny move. But if you talk with your opponent before the game, you can say, okay, let's just get rid of this game by uh, making this repetition. Black can do the same. We the move king to uh, to e7. Now it's uh, White's turn to go king e1, and the players go back and forth. Well, uh, that's 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 a funny way, of course, and uh, people can laugh about it. And there are many other examples uh, with a serious uh, repetition of moves, but also just funny moves. But bringing the game into disrepute is not allowed according to the FIDE laws of uh, of chess. So now. What, what's going to happen? Well, the, the tournament continues and uh, Daniel Dubov and Jan Nepomnici, they just lost their game. You can say this is just a, a stupid way of, of treating the game. If they wanted to get rid of it, just pick any other normal opening line. Basically, in any opening, you will find ways to, to make a draw and then you can call it a day. That's, that's fine. There, then nobody would have um, complained about it. I would not have made this video probably. But that's, uh, that's important, yeah, so you can uh, judge the players for their stupidity, you can also say that the rules of chess, they, they, they should be changed somehow to fight against prearranged draws. I'm curious to hear from you, what do you think, not only of this video of course, but of course what you think about uh, all these uh, rules, what, what should be done in the future to, to avoid these kind of uh, problems. It's one of the biggest problems in chess, apart from all the, the cheating uh, stories, uh, fighting against smartphones and uh, other ways to receive information from outside. This is a serious problem uh, to fight against these uh, prearranged draws. So let me know in the comments what you think, if you have any brilliant idea and then I can say that thanks to you I come up with a, with a brilliant suggestion to, to fight these, uh, these rules. Anyway, thanks for watching, make sure to subscribe to this channel, thanks for doing that and I will cover hopefully more serious games from uh, from this tournament uh, as well because we all want to know how Dubov and Nepomniachtchi are faring on day two on this uh, event maybe they can bounce back and win the championship anyway that would be a fantastic story let's see how it goes more coverage later